We believe that web frameworks are going through the same transformation as other software has, and we're calling it AMP as a service. Now, to give you a bit of an idea of what this actually means, let's take a look at a few things. The AMP team is polishing the core format towards the more delightful, native-like experiences. As you can see here, images on AMP pages now support the lightbox by default. And that lightbox has smooth morphing transitions while supporting dismissal via swipe, just like users expect from native apps, but you don't often get on the web. And finally, because of the speed of light is finite, images may still take a while to load. To improve the instant feeling of AMP, we're soon starting to automatically generate blurry preview images when serving from the AMP cache, which will appear instantly. All of these improvements come to your AMP documents for free and importantly, by default. That's what we mean with AMP as a service. Element level infinite scroll. This feature is incredibly useful for users because it helps create an engaging experience by making sure they don't have to click for more content. Now, this work was actually kicked off by members of Pinterest engineering team based on their experience creating infinite scroll for Pinterest. Two of the most important thing for things for your users to be able to do is find content quickly and then take action on that content quickly. And this is where autocomplete becomes the bread and butter for creating a great search and form filling experience. Now, we originally had an example of how you could create a great autocomplete experience on amp.dev. And this used the magic of AMP bind and AMP list. However, that didn't fully express the powers of an autocomplete feature because it missed things like type ahead, client side filter, etc. Which is why we're excited to announce that we're working hard on releasing a new component called AMP Autocomplete. Now, members of the UI working group are actually working on creating this component and drew up this demo where you can actually see how far two airports are. We're working on releasing a new, new set of carousel primitives that help de developers address real business use cases with great ease. And some of these use cases are a news gallery that helps you really highlight the powerful images that accompany a news article, a homepage carousel that allows you to quickly highlight the new information on a site, a product gallery that will help users understand more about the product they're about to buy, related lists to help keep the user engaged, as well as other experiences such as recipes, etc., that rely on a horizontally scrolling div. Now, we've been making improvements to AMP image so that developers are always downloading the right size image for all devices, which makes images, image loading much faster on mobile devices. Now, currently, while you're waiting for content to appear, you'll see these three dots for all content, except for ads, where you'll see the ad badge. And so we've been working on revamping our loaders. Now, the first loader that you see here is one that will be rendered for all AMP components, regardless of what it is. It could be iframe, lists, or carousels. The second loader that you see here is our revamped ads loader. And the third, and the one that I'm the most excited about, is a content-aware loader that will help your users understand what kind of content to expect. AMP Toolbox App Optimizer actually currently helps you generate transformed AMP pages that offer a better loading experience for AMP pages that aren't served from the cache. However, publishing AMP transformed AMP pages has been incredibly tedious because they're considered invalid AMP by the validator. Now, as was mentioned on the TSC panel yesterday, I'm also excited to announce that we're starting to work on ensuring that the AMP validator will support the validation of all transformed AMP pages. And once this has launched, Publishers can choose to publish transformed AMP pages in a paired AMP approach or in an AMP first approach while making sure they get great performance even if their documents aren't served from the cache. Full JavaScript integration is coming to AMP. So just to make this absolutely perfectly clear, you can now run your own JavaScript in AMP documents. On the surface, what we're doing is we're introducing a new extension called AMP Script and allows you to run your own JS inside the document. How far could we push the limits of this technology? So Aaron from the AMP team built an emulator. This emulator runs in AMP script off of the main thread and works. It's playable. It works as you would expect. Um, and it's actually fairly small. Now, this example is not small enough to go on an AMP document. This is invalid AMP to do this. And we think this is beyond the limits of what you'd want to do on an AMP document. But it does demonstrate that the technology is capable of doing far, far more than what we thought initially. So you can go to this URL 
and register yourself for your domain, and we will send you an origin trial token. This will allow you to put AMP script components on pages and try it out. But we really want your feedback. We want to hear what's difficult. We want to hear what's hard. We want to hear what works and what doesn't. And we're looking forward to hearing from you as you try it out.